Uh, it was about a week ago that I took um, and made some rice. I made it sort of dry. I used uh, one cup of dry rice and one and a half cups of water. So it made sort of a dry, a dry rice. And I took that dry rice. You know, it's it's, it's moist because it's been cooked. I took that cooked rice, let it cool, and I put it in here. And there it is. But what I did to create that um, mycelium was I sprinkled one, I think it was one teaspoon of uh, fresh. There it is, fresh. That's uh, insect exoskeletons and uh, insect poo. And uh, so I used the, the bacteria and the microorganisms that were associated in, in this. Um, what that looks like is sort of like uh, ground pepper or something. It's, it's got kind of a tannish color to it. Uh, so I, um, I mixed that up and I just stuck it down here under underneath the tank here and sort of forgot about it until tonight. So uh, it was all undisturbed like this. And then when I took this top off, I, I knocked some of the water vapor from the, the top onto it and it made those little dense. So the next step will be to mix this up with some uh, brown sugar, uh, approximately the same amount as this weighs. And we'll let that sit for a couple of weeks to make, uh, well it'll be IMO2 when I mix it up with the brown sugar and then it'll be called IMO3 when I uh, after it's after it's fermented with the sugars and then we'll go on for IMO4 from there so why am I doing this I suppose that's a good question why do you, this is just a little different than anybody else I've known to make IMO um, generally what you might do is go out and get some leaves out of the forest or something and and make an indigenous microorganism batch from that. Well, it just seemed to me that the fresh, being such a quality item to put in your garden, would be a good source of the of the bacterias and fungus and what other whatever other microorganisms want to grow in here. So uh, that's why I did this. Um, okay, so uh, next time I see you, we'll be doing IMO 4.